Hello? Alright, that's good. Hopefully the game is loud enough. I don't want it to be too quiet. Alright, so... Howdy do. I was gonna say it's been a while, but it really hasn't. At least I don't think so. I, I streamed, uh... Smash pretty recently. Uh, even though that stream... I'm not saving it because it wasn't that good. <laughs> I had a lot of technical issues. Was not happy about that. Anyway. Uh, howdy do. Excuse me while I set up my blades. No, that's not where you do it. It's like every time I come back to this game, I always have to learn how to play it again. Counting on you. Let's see, who are the handy dandy blades? I know Koro's one. Been a long time coming. Rock, always probably, I think yourself. it was. Where's Rock? Rock, there's. Pleased to meet you. And for you, it was... I will do my best to prove Hello my work. There. You just leave it to me. I'll use my brains to put this team to good use. And then... I am at your service. I've been sharpening my fangs for this day to come. Is it Boreas? I believe it was, because that's... Yeah, that gives, uh... Nia three healers. So how do you do? So today's stream is, uh... Going to be about taking on super bosses uh there are eight super bosses in this game that I've defeated uh five of them so uh there's three left that i need to take on before we do i'm gonna boost up some of the blades with uh different weapon modifications so i got uh pyra not not mithra where is it let me see so pyra just to show off uh she has a new not a new chip i gave it to her at the end of my last xenoblade stream it was the Tachyon ship that she got from that I got from defeating Tyranitite and Kurodil the first time. So there it is. Counters attacks with 50% ether damage. So there we go. That's uh I don't need anything more than that. And the uh these are the super boss chips that I have right now. I have one Shining Star chip from Pernicious Benf and two Prion chips from uh Chicken Heart Dagmara. So I'm gonna be giving those out to people. Um so Mithra apparently like the the best one to give to her, which I found this out online for reasons, is uh actually not one I have, so I'll leave her the way she is now. I think she'll be fine. Uh I'm gonna need to boost up at least one member of Poppy, I mean not Poppy, uh Nia and uh and uh Morag's team, so I'm gonna do with Bridget. Uh because Bridget's the main one, of course. How do I sort again? Right, minus. So it's the difference between a shining star and a Prey on ship. Oh, she already has a Chinese star ship. Never mind then. She's good. How about you? Hmm. Well, how about Nia's group? Oh, I increased their, uh... Ah, oh, Jesus is hard. I gave them this so that I could get better stuff. I guess we could give this to Ejion too, since he is the tank. It already keeps his block rate up pretty nice, so sure. Katana of Slaughter. The Prion chips are nice. Anyone I could give them to that uh, adds to their stats in a good way. Well, that's nice. I'm always about uh, upping the main crew first. And I can always get more of these, so it's not a huge loss. There we go. I think I had the difficulty set to custom, right? I'm not going to keep it like that. I just want it to be like that for now. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. So, uh, currently I have the difficulty set to custom. And uh, it's set to all the easiest settings. So, for those who don't know what those are. It's not going to be like that when I actually fight the sewer bosses, though. So, uh, the enemy attack power is incredibly low. The frequency of the attack is low. Their HP is low. And all these other stuff is really high. So, what's Devo Duration? 
Adjust debuff effect duration. Does that mean... I'm trying to think. I don't know. What's this? Ascended... Adjust potty gauge depletion with the rate of loss increasing to the right. Potty gauge? I guess I wouldn't want that to decrease. Uh, so any debuff, what's that mean? Does that mean how they debuff me or how I debuff them? Is it better to have it higher? I don't know, I'm just, I think that's how it is to make it the easiest. So this is just what I do to like, try to farm super bosses. Once again, I'm not going to do this for, uh, for like, the, uh, the main fights, but these are the fights that I've already won. So it's not going to be like, oh my gosh, you're cheating or anything like that. Uh, which is not even cheating, even if I do do it for the other fights. It's totally, totally allowable, in my opinion. Because, I mean, come on. It's it's an option to do this to the game, so it should be acceptable. The issue is I don't think I can pull off uh, driver combos with this uh, setup. At least I don't think I can. Because I know uh, I have Topple. Uh, Nia and Morag have Break. I don't know who has Launch, though. I think Nia should have it with Nim, But she doesn't use it a lot. And I have Smash with Rock. Nice. Oh yeah, she did it. She doesn't do it a lot, so I'll appreciate that she took it the time to actually do it that time. Also, the good thing of giving a... Uh, uh, Morag's allies, Morag's blades, higher attack rates is that they will, uh, they will do more damage, keeping the attention on Morag. She's a tank, it kinda needs to be on her. Anyone gonna set up for a splash hazard? I don't care who does it. I just picked up another shining, shining star chip. That's good. That's what I wanted. So yeah, it's actually easy to farm them like this, obviously, since you're kind of like holding back their crazy super boss powers, but still. Sometimes uh, exceptions need to be made. Where do we go from here? Uh, I don't know. Probably here.
All right, I apologize. I had to, I just realized I closed Discord and I just wanted to check in on one of my friends to see if uh, they were open and available. Uh, as I assume they are not, so that's fine. Let's uh, take out this guy again. Even on easy difficulty, this guy has wiped me before. Because it's murdery. I don't get how it works. I haven't figured it out yet. When he uses murder ray, he casts doom on your characters, and it might kill them all. The thing I don't understand though is that sometimes it only affects one person, other times it affects everybody, and I haven't figured out like what the difference is. Like, I mean, I, is it an area of effect thing? Is it who's standing in front of them that gets hit by it? I don't know. Well, he just hit me with Doom, so I guess I'm gonna die soon. Nah, he just did that thing that he does when he does it that I don't like. Titan's Awakening. Oh wait, I think Morag has Smash as well on, on the Geon. I could be wrong, I think she does. Wait, that's not the matter. The thing that matters is launch. That's the thing I care about. Never mind. I did not even think that would kill him. He did not drop uh, his chip though. I'm not surprised. He doesn't drop it. He doesn't like dropping it. He doesn't like sharing. That's okay. That's okay. More important than that, I did get the Shining Star chip so uh, I can see who I can put that on. Ooh. Sure. Alright, so uh, we're gonna go take on our first super boss this, uh, this stream on the standard difficulty, and he's going to be in Tantal. I don't remember if this one spawns during a certain time or a certain weather pattern, but with any luck, he'll be here. I mean, and with any double luck, we'll kill him on the first try so that I don't have to try it again. Like, I don't have to try to force him to spawn again. I can just approach the pillar and force him to spawn. And, and, and like touch the gravestone. It's like, okay, here he is. All right. Ugh, I'm always hitting the wrong buttons today. Every time I come back to play this game, I'm always terrible at remembering all the buttons. Okay, so we're going normal. Save. Let's try changing the time. May he spawns only at night.
Hmm. It's snowing. I guess I guess the weather has to be snowstorm. Which is slightly different from snowing. Apparently the only way to force uh, weather to change is to leave the Titan completely. It's my understanding. Here's hoping we actually get to fight this guy and actually beat him. Where do we go from here? Sigh out for trouble. Where do we go from here? Still just snowing. I'm actually gonna look it up quickly online to make sure I know how to spawn him. I assume it's Snowstorm, uh, but just in case, I want to know. So his uh, his name is Cloud C King Ken. Tweet. My stream will focus on fighting Cloud C King Ken Eric and why is it always correct to Anna and cohorts? And Ophion. Alright. So, uh, oh, that wasn't the reason. I mean, I was gonna also give me a second. Let's see, Cloud Sea King Ken. Xenoblade Wiki. Thank you, Wiki. It says he appears right, okay. Kingdom of Tantal, Genbu Drifts, level blah blah blah. Ether fog during the final chapter. Alright, I thought so. So it's not really a snowstorm, but uh it should be noticeable. Anyway, as we set off to fight the first, I mean, I'm glad that I started with him. Like, it was always the plan to start with him. I'm kind of, uh, like, freak. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if I can beat him. But I want to knock him out first if I can, because, specifically, he's weather-tied. And weather-tied stuff in Xenoblade has always been a bit of a pain in the butt. So, you know. Let's rest the spell. Let's get going. And there he is. Okay, uh, saving the game. Right, I'm not ready. I have no idea what to do. So, I've fought, like, three or four Squoods. And the only thing I know about them off the top of my head is that uh, healing through HP potions is impossible. Because they're so big that the HP potions just drop off all over the place, like, way out of range. And also, they have a move where they spin around and they, like, shoot out air. 
and it just causes like six blowdowns on you. So I don't have any blowdown resist on anyone. I know that's stupid, but I don't. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, this will be fun. All right then. Uh, well, before I fight, let me check the chat. I mean, not the chat, the the log, and see who's here. Avocado, but ba Badabo, Badadu, Badadu, Commander and Slow Cool. All right, cool. So we're gonna we're gonna attempt this, and I'm probably gonna die. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Come on, then, Rex. My goal, uh, how I fight Super Bosses. And bosses in general is I need to put four orbs on him, and then I need to do a full burst, and hopefully that will be enough to kill him. Seriously, he's just gonna talk to me right off the bat. You're a real piece of shit, you know that. Alright, water. We got water on him. I could have made it easier by using Mithra's two lights, because by the time I finish with the lights... Oh, I think I did it too early. Oh no, I didn't. Okay, cool. Damn it, I tried to topple and it didn't take. Ah, there we go. It took this time. Oh, there he goes. He's doing it. I think that's the move. He actually dropped a Moon Matter chip, which makes me happy. Uh, this is the third one. I don't think I have a light on him yet, so that's what I'm gonna do next. This will put the force in foresight. I don't know why realizing that that's what she said like kind of confused me. And no one launched him this time, that's okay, I don't need it. Oh, I thought that was... Oh no, it's a spinning move that he does. I don't know what the spinning move is called. I think that might be it. Yeah, that's the move. Bridget, you 
Alright, here we go. Oh, I think I can beat him. After this, we're gonna th uh, hit him with a. Uh, I was gonna say a final smash. Might as well be. We're gonna hit him with full burst. There we go. Let's finish this. Here, Nim. I mean, Nia. And he dropped another Moon Matter Chip. Yes! I got two Moon Matter Chips out of one battle with him. I am a genius. Oh, what are these little flying fish? Clearly not enemies, but they're cool. So, uh, there we go. One Super Boss down, two to go. These things are creepy, honestly. This place is, uh, literally Xenoblade 2's version of, um... What's it called? Uh, Satoru Marsh, I want to say, from the first game. Because Satoru Marsh is pretty unassuming, you know, it's like a normal looking place, normal enough. And then you know what happens? You have to, uh, uh, at night, it just, it becomes hell. Like in the morning, all the enemies are like level 30 or whatever, they're like around your level range at that time in the game, whatever it is. At night, they're just, they're end game enemies everywhere. It's scary. And this place is like that, but only during weather. I remember when I first came to this place and the weather changed and there were all these gigantic fish flying everywhere. I was terrified. Oh, I'm stuck under it. Oh yeah, another thing about my new Rex setup. Like, if, if anyone didn't notice, I actually... I should have mentioned this before I fought the guy, but that's okay. Uh, actually, I, did I mention it? I don't know. I have Rex on a setup that is, I guess, the most broken setup in this game. Sort of. It's called the Crit Heal build. That's cute. Not so fond of fish. Yep. 
Yeah, I, man, I've gotten out of all the blade combinations of com conversations. It seems the ones I've gotten the most of involve adenine, in some way. I guess I guess it's just because I use adenine a lot. I like her. She's a great healer. Works really well on Morag for some reason. So uh, yeah, I like her conversation with Newt too. That one's a really nice one. But uh, okay. So uh, Rex's crit heal build. Uh, I'm not the first to do this. I'm probably like the millionth. Uh, uh, but yeah, so he has this. Which I fucking love. Um, so basically, every time I switch blades, uh, my power increases by 12%. Until it can hit up to 250%, which that is after 20 switches. After, yeah, after 20... 21 switches, you'll just about hit hit that max. And, uh, yeah, so... I kind of forgot. I remembered halfway through the Cloud Sea King Ken fight, which is, I guess, if you notice, I started switching a lot. But I'll definitely do use, use it more for the next fights. It's really cool. Then he has this, which absorbs 22% of critical damage dealt as HP. So if he lands a critical hit for 1,000 damage, let's say, 22% of that, he heals himself. And uh, because you can see that I'm using Mithra, who deals shit tons of damage, and also Mithra's key thing is her increased critical hit rate. So uh, with Mithra and this, he's like healing constantly. And then this, which just increases, increases critical damage. So basically I'm doing even more critical hit damage. And uh, it's just, it's stupid. So, uh, yeah. And I just got the chip that I needed. Which is an additional piece of, uh... And there we go. The Sword of Banishing. It will increase Mithra's critical hit rate to 54%. So, uh, let's do that. My block rate drops, which is a little sad, but... Whatever. That is ridiculous. Increases damage dealt to Titans by 50%. And the crit rate is just dumb. Vindicator. That is cool. Should I put it on Rock? As well? I mean, I can always fight Cloud Seeking so Ken again. I don't know why I want to hold on to it. It's more useful if it's actually in use, so I'm actually going to put it in use. And also, because the crit heal build revolves around Rex... It, it isn't tied to Mithra. So, for example, now now Rock has a 60 thing, a 60 crit hit chance, so... He's, uh... He's going to deal some seriously crazy damage. What can I put on you? Sure. And yeah, let's do the indoor attack. The next fight is indoors, so I didn't use uh, Mithra's level five, level four special, which I was trying to, but I forgot about it. Um, but uh, okay, so that was one super boss down. Moving on to the next one. So if you don't know, this is where you fought a Malthus during the uh, the end of the game. This is where his final battle was. And instead we have these assholes here now. We've got... Uh, oh my gosh. We've got level 99 Valta Sovereign. The level 114 unique Mark 7 Eric. And the level 97 Grandum Sovereign. So uh, these guys, I'm actually a little bit more worried about. So I'll give you, I'll give you the rundown. Uh, I'm basing this specifically off the non-super boss versions of them, but I'm pretty sure they have the same strengths. So level 99 dude, little motorcycle dude, they suck because they can topple you. They have this move where they like pull a like a U-turn, they they drift and it just topples you. That's annoying. Uh, oh my gosh, I think the worst of these is actually the level 97 guy in the back. Because those huge guys have a move where they create a shield that absorbs all damage. And then they uh, follow it up with a uh, damage release where they reflect all their damage to you and will wipe you. Like 99% of the time they wipe me. Um, and finally, the dude in the middle. The thing I'm most worried about him is that he has the ability to drop your blade affinity. 
as well as uh, other restrictive attacks, and he, he has a lot of uh, super guard that he can do, where all your attacks will just bounce off him. Once again, this is based off of their base forms, not their unique forms. So, uh, yeah. Regardless, uh, I think they will be tougher than uh, Mr. Cloud Seeking Ken, but we'll see. Um, so we're gonna start. We're gonna focus on the tiny guy first. Oh yeah, and there's no way to topple. I think he's resistant to break, but he will enter a break state if he uh, uses a certain move. Like that. Also, I think the main guy can also force you lock on. So, uh, that's, uh, not cool. Oh, he doesn't resist break. Okay, he's dead. Alright, not too bad. Now, this guy I'm worried about. So, the only way I know how to counter his bullshit is, um, is to force a team attack or to force a level 4 special. Because while that's happening, his, uh, his damage release, you'll become invincible. So, damage release won't hurt you. Also, to topple him would be handy. And he can do that too. I didn't forget he could do that. Oh, I had my blade tied. Damn it, I can't switch. I forgot, that's another thing guy in the middle can do. So I just, I'm just gonna save this until the last possible second. All right, he's good. He's down. I prefer to be concerned and have my concerns be pointless as opposed to uh, just not care about it and then get wiped. Oh yeah, he can tie your blades. All right. I, I had a feeling. I mean, well, I saw him do it earlier, but still. Annoying. Oh yeah, that's another move they can do. That's really annoying. They launch you. Enchant sword. Yeah, he can. Yeah, he can fuck with a lot of stuff. He's just sitting there on his computer. Whoa, what is that back there? He just summoned another one. Oh my gosh, he summoned two. I need to kill this guy, he's annoying me. I don't know if switching between Pyra and Mithra counts. I would like it to, but I don't think it does. And he's dead. He dropped his chip too. I believe the sunlight chip is his. Now we just need to focus on these guys. I didn't know he could summon more. Oh, 
Oh, that's the move. That's the move. There we go. He's gonna damage release, so I'll counter it. Jeez, I was supposed to fight three enemies, instead I fought like what, eight? Two, back, two down. I'm doing pretty well. hole still here. I think of course it is. So do I have a time on him? Alright. I'd believe it. Took a bit. Oof. That wasn't that bad actually. He didn't look like he had a lot of HP. And they got his chip. Let's check it out. Sunlight chip. Eater of souls. Restores 8% HP of damage dealt after a successful auto attack. So this thing makes it so that you're constantly healing. Because you're always going to be auto attacking. That's pretty fucking cool. I can give that to my comms so that they're constantly healing as well. Oh. Adds a 25% chance of attacking again after a successful auto attack. Reduces aggro drawn from specials and driver arts by 20. Oh, actually, that's really handy. It seems to be completely, uh... Oh, actually, it, it, just, it, like, it has a specific specialization. That's nice. I like that. That's handy. This is a good one. Man, wasn't this a crazy part of the story? When I got here and the objective became literally take the elevator to Elysium, I was just like, this is it? I was freaking out. And I'm like, I just couldn't I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I knew the point of the game was to get to Elysium, but after finally making it there, after like 110 hours, I was like, we're actually going to go to Elysium? I was just... My, my, my mind was blown. So before we go take on the last of the super bosses, I'm going to check out uh, my records over here at Garfont. I love that this guy's here. I'm sad that it's not uh, that was a slog. reversible. Let's go. You have to beat all the all the uh, unique monsters in the entire game again to get records. That's okay. I I, I mean I just I wish. So uh, here we go. 
So Gladiator Orion, uh, five minutes. Pernicious Ben, seven minutes. Cloud Seat King Ken, five and a half minutes. Uh, Mark Four, Mark Seven, Eric, four minutes. Chicken Heart Dagmara, minute thirty. And Tyranno Titan Kirodel, six minutes thirty seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I don't have a record for uh, the one in uh, 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 Gormot. Let's go do that. Let's put a record on him just so I can have all the super bosses. Oh no, I didn't take a screenshot for defeating Eric. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, so let's go to Gormot and beat that guy first. So that I can have the record on record. One of the last things I did in Torno was actually come here. Because in Torna you can come back to this uh, specific location. And sure enough, in the cave there is, a, there is a, a unique monster in there. Of course, I had to look it up because I wanted to recruit... There's a character that you need to beat a bunch of different uniques in order to recruit them. And uh, I didn't know where they were. And I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't think to come here. So yeah, let's fight this guy. He's not too hard. Uh, Reeking Douglas, that was his name. Ooh boy, didn't expect that last hit in there. It is hilarious just watching that delete HP. What is uh, Thunder? It's Earth, right? Okay, I always forget that one. Yeah, this fight was over sooner, but why, uh... You know, why, uh... Oh, I thought that was the one where he rolled for some reason. That's okay. Enemy down. Remind me to hold back next time. Whoa, nice. There we go. Now we have a record on Reeking Douglas. So that leaves one super boss left. One super boss left. Oh boy. I'm really interested how this fight's gonna go. I know nothing. Not true. I, I asked for tips, and people told me about how the fight goes, but there's a difference between people telling you, uh, oh, the enemy will probably do this, this, and this, and then actually fighting the enemy and having them do this, this, and this, you know? Keep a close eye out for trouble. Where do we go from here? All right.
All right, so uh, full disclosure, I was just typing on Discord to send a message, and I was trying to write remains, because like, I'm like, oh, defeated three, I mean two of the three, one remains. And uh, I wrote, I, I, so I did the slide type for remains, and you know what it auto-corrected it to? Genitalia. How? That's curious. All right. Whatever. Okay, so here we go. Oh my gosh. This is going to be fun. This is actually, like, the other ones I won, like, I was really worried going into it, but, like, like it became pretty clear, like, halfway through the fight, and I'm like, I can do this. No big deal. This one, I'm not too sure. I mean, someone posted an image of them hitting, uh, hitting this man with a full burst of all eight elemental orbs, and he survived. So, uh, maybe that was, maybe they didn't do it right, or whatever, but regardless, um... So how do you initiate the attack against them? I guess we gotta wait for them to come closer. So I did do this the other day, and I'm disappointed that I did because, uh, like, I didn't fight him. I just I just waited here until he uh, started attacking me, just because I wanted to see. And I didn't realize that he does something kind of un kind of expected, but also really freaking cool. And I was like, oh bummer. Come here, dude. He's weak against light, huh? Fitting. I guess. I don't know. Mithra's light. Ophion! There's no way people can accidentally be attacked by him. He's got a very small... Here we go. Yeah, I just like that his uh, actual self like sticks out of the uh, the cockpit. I mean, obviously he should. It's just I didn't expect that to happen when I fought when I when I let him attack me yesterday. I was like, oh boy, he can do that. That's cool. Yeah, I want to start with light. Oh, jeez, he just launched a bunch of missiles at me. You can't do that. That's that's cool. Dang, that that actually really hurt. I keep forgetting the switch blades and you'd increase my attack rate. Okay, Rex, stop getting closer to the evil demon uh artifice. Alright, so we have light on him and now we have electricity. I can get fire and water on him very easily, so we're gonna try to do that now. I don't know what Calamity Fall is, but no, don't hit me with it. Okay, he so has electricity, light, fire, I need water now. I can do water by having two lights and then uh, myth, uh, having Mia or Morag finish it out. Hope no one's annoyed me talking through the whole fight, but I'm like I'm trying to keep myself focused. So I remember what I'm supposed to do. Ah, fuck. That's not good. Someone pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. Morag, you're right next to me, please. 
Thank you. I didn't expect that to kill me. But once again, like, even though I'm healing ridiculous amounts of HP, like, at all times, it doesn't mean that I'm invincible, obviously. If something hits me hard enough, I will die. Oh, but he is invincible. So uh, we already have fire water, we need ice. Damn it, we can't do ice. We can if I use uh Damn it. I don't wanna pick her up, it's a waste of time, but I need to. Alright, we got ice on there now. I don't think I'm going to be able to get another one before uh, Numa runs out, so I'll have to use the, uh... Now to use it now. Maybe a mistake? We'll see. go. Right, let's see how much damage we do. He's not gonna die. It's not gonna kill him. It did a lot more damage than I thought it would. But, uh, did not kill him. And he's enraged. Morag, thank you. I did not see that coming. Luckily, did Morag dodge it, or did it just not, or did it not kill her? Whatever that was, that was scary. And uh, thank you, Morag. Let's bring it home! And he sinks into the cloud sea. Bye bye, Ophion. Sorry about the beating I had to give you. Oh my gosh, we did it. One try each. That that could have been a retry though. I think I don't know. I'm gonna say because I didn't I didn't see it was happening so quickly. Like as soon as he initi as soon as I saw Phallic Buster, I was like, okay, that's a move he did not use before. I need to dodge it. I was trying to rush through Mithra's uh, thing so I can activate Ruinous Weather so that we can all become invincible. But it hit it. There was like no wind up. Like it just it just came out and it hit us all. Killed me and Nia. Luckily by that time we had built up enough uh, party gauge to be revived. And uh, Morag probably dodged it. That's my guess. That maybe she dodged it. I have no clue.
I'm gonna go with Morag Dodge it. It's the and uh, of a new day. oh, she saved Let our damn lives. The Granted, I don't think it would have been too hard to retry it. It depends. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Uriah first. So we can look at this new and improved list. And then we're gonna take that uh, data terminal we got from Ophion. I was spoiled for what it does already, sorry. I wish I wasn't. I wish I didn't know that you actually got something of value from defeating Ophion. Someone, uh, someone I was talking to was like, well duh, what, you thought you wouldn't get anything? And I'm like, no, of course not. Like, at most I just thought, you never got anything for defeating sewer bosses. Never. Like, the most you got is like a unique chip, so that's like all I expected. Is the Battle Observer... Okay, never. I was like, just the, the model, like from afar, reminded me of Pandoria. So here we go. Gladiator Orion, Reeking Douglas, Pernicious Bem, Cloud Sea King Ken, Mark 7 Eric, Artifice Ophion, Chicken Heart Dagmara, and Tyranno Titan Kurodale. So there we go. Boop. Defeated them all. I am proud of myself. So, and the thing that I got... Device holding Ophion's memory opens the World Tree bulkhead. Because for those who don't know... Which I, once again, think I'm the last person to realize this. There is a section of the World Tree that you cannot get into at all. Like, there's a few. Um, well, two. One of them is only openable by uh, Adenine. Adenine. Uh, when you do her blade quest, it involves going in there. And uh, that's actually where she goes if you don't have her in your team. She will be in that room, and then you can talk to her and bring her back onto your team. Because that room is just full of like a limitless supply of information. Information that she wants to know. So uh, she'll stay there and study it. Uh, she'll never be able to study at all, she admits it, but she wants to study it. So you leave her there. The other is this really small terminal in, I think, the computer room. Uh, and uh, I always wondered, like, why can't I get in there? And I was always wondering what it was. And then, of course, someone decided to be a spoily asshole and be like, Oh, uh, there's, like, this is in there because of Ophion. And I'm like... I mean, I was... I was Not only was I being... Like, like I, I wasn't asking to get an answer. It was rhetorical. I also make it known everywhere I go that I hate any kind of spoilers. I consider anything a spoiler. Uh, my best friend, unfortunately, uh, told me, like, when I told him, hey, I got to this part of the story, he's like, oh, cool. And then he's like, oh, that means you can get the third poppy. Go do it. And I'm like, I didn't know there was a third poppy. You know? Like, dude's my best friend, but I was like, I was a little upset. Like, I consider anything that you would not know unless you play the game to be a spoiler. So, uh, I don't know what's so hard about people understanding that and shutting up on Twitter, but people are fucking idiots. So, yeah. So the, the, the Xenoblade 2 hype cycle was weird, and because of it, I'm actually not doing a hype cycle for Xenoblade 3. Like, if Xenoblade Chronicles 3 ever becomes a thing, what I'm gonna do is mute and block every single mention of that game. Ever. Like, as soon as it's announced, I'm muting all the, all the words, blocking all the phrases, everything, on every single site that I'm on. Every single one, so that I can go into the game completely and totally blind. Uh, which means I don't get to participate in the pre-release hype, and I don't get to, like, talk with people or theorize, but you know what? Like, the op- the, like... That means that I won't have any spoilers, I'm 100%- And unlike Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which unfortunately came out when I, when I had no money, and I had to wait, like, weeks before I was able to pick it up, and, uh, and by that time people decided to say stuff, and I'm like, you all suck, you're not friends anymore. <laughs> For real, I'm not even kidding, I unfriended- whoa. Oh my gosh. For some reason, I didn't think there was a floor, and I immediately thought I killed Rex, and I, I got scared. Oh my gosh. Hello, what do you sell? How do you even get here? I think I probably have that mod. Actually, no, let me check something. No, oh gosh, I always hate hitting the wrong button. They're like, there's three different buttons that take you into the menu. Y, X, and, pl and minus. One takes you to the map, one takes you to the save, and one takes you to the actual menu that you want to be on. Uh, what is it called?
Element core. Elemental core. I don't have a light one, really? I thought I got one. Because I know where it is, and I'm like, oh, I passed that guy. I definitely picked it up. Just scroll all the way down to the E's. Wow, it's not even here. All right, well then we'll get we'll go do that after we finish this too. So it should be in the computer room. Which, by the way, the computer room was the room that had me kind of terrified, honestly, when I first played this game. Not so much terrified as I was, uh, just like I think I know how this game ends. I was wrong. Like because for some, some I forget what it was, but something put in my mind. Oh, it was. Like when you finish chapter seven, I believe it is. There's that there's that moment in the uh, Spirit Crucible Elpis where you see the world recreation from Xenoblade Chronicles one, and that was like, oh fuck, like uh, that was that what I think it was? I was like 99% sure that that was exactly what I thought it was, and I was like, what does it mean? And so for the entire rest of the game, I was trying to figure out what it meant, and uh, that involved me guessing a lot of bullshit. And all kinds of things. And among those guesses, when I got to the computer room, I immediately thought, uh-oh. This is a simulation. Because there are, like, these gigantic servers in there. And they all have specific, like, names and numbers. Well, they have numbers on them. And my guess was, oh my gosh, this is this is a simulation. Like, we are in some weird... Trial world or something like that. And, uh... No, I, oh, hey, what's up? I'm just, uh... Giving out my guess as to what... Like the plot twist of the game was. Uh, back from before I finished it. So here we go. Hello, sir. Excuse me. Uh, but let's wait till I get there. I don't know why I saw it. I thought it was closer to the top. I didn't realize it was so far away. Oh, well, I mean, I'm already walking there. It's like at the end of Xenoblade Chronicles X. At the end of X, not a spoiler, just like they give you a location you need to go to, and I'm like, you know what? Since this is the end, I'm gonna f I'm gonna go there uh, normally. Like I didn't use any skip travel points. I just I just I just ran the entire distance, and uh, it took a long time. But I was like, eh, it's the end of the game. Why not? Like in hindsight, it was kind of dumb because it was a really long way to go. Yeah, I'm not gonna fight that robot. I've already beaten like a million of them. We weren't designed for that bullshit. So, uh... Ah, here we go, come on. So, um... Uh, as for what you missed, uh... Oof. Well, uh, I'll let you know in a, in a bit. I at least want to get to this place first and receive my reward. Alright, so this stream, dude, was my was me versus the final three super bosses I hadn't beaten yet. And uh, as of 20 minutes ago, I beat them all. So, uh, I won. I'm done. I won. They're all dead. Believe you me, I didn't intend to beat them all so quickly. I imagined it would take a few retries, but this stupid build that I have on Rex is stupid. His crit heal build that I told you about is dumb. Like, it saved my life more times than I can count already. And uh, actually, uh, the craziest thing about it... Well, actually, let's let's look at some, some of the things. So, uh... I got Mithra, so from the from the first, uh, text it to me, text what? Oh yeah, the crit heal build, right. Actually, I can show you right here. So, uh, this is the setup for it. Um, the world tree drop, as you can see. Well, this doesn't have to do a crit healing, but it, it 
Well, actually, it does. Um, this increases the damage you deal every time you switch a blade. So basically, when you have Rex on, just keep switching blades. Like like at every opportunity you have, because it will increase his power 250% when you're done with it. That takes uh, 20 switches, 21 switches exact to be uh, to get up to full strength. Uh, and that's totally doable. It is super easy to do when you have high affinity with all the blades that you're using. Dumb. Uh, the next thing is this, the Avant Guard Metal. It increases the, the amount of critical damage you do. No, it increases the amount of he uh, health you heal from doing critical damage. And the Optical Headband increases the critical damage you do. So uh, you have these two things increasing Rex's damage and his crit rate. And you have this healing him for all of his crit damage. It is dumb. And to make it even better, so the first super boss I defeated gave me a Moon Matter chip, which uh, increases the crit hit rate of your blades by a stupid amount. So I put it on Mithra because of course I did. And look at her crit rate. Her crit rate is uh, 54%. That is ridiculous. Yeah, the Sword of Banishing. So this right here is actually the Super Boss chip as well, the Sunlight chip, as you can see. I just haven't given it to anyone because I just got it. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, text you like the, uh, the the items, and also I will text you um, where to get them. But like that's what they are. Like you can always like just using that you can check your inventory and see if you have them. Because once again, I had all of them. I didn't even have to go farming for them. The optical headband, the just all the things I already had in my inventory. Yeah, this is gonna be archived. I'm gonna put this on YouTube. And I'm also gonna splice out the fights against uh, uh, Ken, uh, Eric, and Ophion so that they're in their own videos as well. But yeah, this will totally be archived. Um. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll send you the names of the uh, weapons of the items and as well as where you can get them, J uh, just so you can check if you have them already. It's specifically the three star versions of them, because you you probably have I have the f the one and two star versions of them as well, but the three star versions are obviously just better. I think it's here. Is this it? No, this is not it. I. I ran all this way for nothing. So where is it? Is that it? Over there? I'll go over there. Gosh, I'm wasting everybody's time. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, as I was saying, this is the computer room. As you can, the data processor room. See all these servers? I was convinced that this entire game took place in the simulation because of this. Like walking in here, I was that was my theory, and I was kind of I was a little disappointed. I'm like, please don't let the plot twist be that uh, there's a room in the world tree that you can't get into. So that room that I was just at that says enter password, that's one of them. There's two rooms in the world tree that you cannot walk into. That one though is tied to a blade quest. There's a specific blade quest in uh, in the game that you'll probably do later, which will let you get into that room I was just in front of. You'll do that later. The current room I'm going to, however, is one that you can only get in if you uh, have the item that I have. See, I honestly thought it was up there. I, I'm guessing this is it. No, this is not it either. Okay. I honestly forgot where the room is. And people are looking at me like I'm dumb. Alright, I'm gonna look at uh, the map and see if I can see it anywhere. It's not here. Where is the room? Did I skip it? Did I walk past it? Hmm. Nope, I see it. I see it. Yeah, I thought it was a simulation. I was actually disappointed. Because, I mean, because it made sense. Like, like, it's not that it made sense. It's just that from, like, the perspective of... Oh. Uh, 
it, it, uh, it just, uh, a lot of things. But I didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't want the answer to be it's just a simulation. I greatly preferred uh, Klaus's answer at the end of the game where he said that it was a, uh, that uh, like in his attempt to re recreate, recreate the world, all he wound up doing was uh, destroying everything and uh, leaving the world empty and then he tried to fix it. And so I, I greatly prefer that answer over anything else. Seems a lot more interesting to me. So how do I get there? I forgot. I forgot how I navigated this place. Okay, it's above me. I gotta keep going up. Alright. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I defeated Ophion, and I'm gonna go grab the reward that Ophion gives you. Are you okay with seeing what that is, Akinius? Am I in the right place? I am. Alright. So yeah, defeating Ophion, you get an item called Ophion's Data Terminal. It's a key item. And uh, you can see it right here. Uh, I forgot. That was the wrong button. Yep. <laughs> I still don't know what button enters the main menu. Alright, uh, so here it is. See, Ophion's Data Terminal. Device holding Ophion's memory. Opens the World Tree bulkhead. So once you have that in your possession, you come over here... To the, uh, to the, to the waste room, whatever this place is. You ignore all these people because they're irrelevant. And you approach this door. The sealed bulkhead. And you open it. And there's a secret chest in there. And the secret chest has... A shit ton of money. Holy crap. That was a lot of crap. Did you see all that? Whoa. For the eagle-eyed person, you notice something very special in there. So here it is. So you got ultimate shield, some world tree drops, a bunch of money, and the main prize, the dilation chip, which is the uh, is also a super boss chip. It's entirely unique, and you can only get it from this chest. There are only ten dilation chips in the entire game. If you want more, you got a new game plus it and beat Ophion again to get ten more. So I actually don't know how good these things are. I just know that there's only 10 of them in the game. So uh, let's see what they do. Because I have no clue what they do. Uh, ooh. That is actually very good. It's better than the accelerator knuckles. That's interesting. Oh wow, it's... Hmm, that's interesting. It's even better than the, the Thanatos whips. Because the Thanatos ones are also... That's a superstar. That's a, that's the Shining Star chip, I think, that I gave her. And these are even better. Oh, look at that block rate. Holy shit. Dang, look at that. These are just better than anything I have on currently. There's only 10 of them though. So I will say, while there are only 10 of them in the base game, through DLC you can apparently get more, I think? Like, from what I understand, there's a... There's a way to get more in the DLC. I don't know how, um, but... You, they can be rewarded to you. You know what? I sh oh my gosh! Did you see that? What the hell? 91% block rate? I did not see that. I was not paying attention. Here you go, Poppy. Are you fucking shitting me? 
Yeah, and then for uh, for uh, Poppy Cutie, she gets forty six percent. Not bad. I'm definitely giving that to Poppy. Are you kidding me? That is the highest block rate in the entire fucking. I don't think anyone can get that high. And here I was being really impressed by a uh, Aegean and uh, Bridget's almost like Bridget's sixty percent. That's 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 the that's 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 absurd. Okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. Exactly. I'll take it though. That's a great hit rate. So um, oh, I forgot I want. You know what? I'll fight him again first, and then we'll go take that screenshot. So uh, just just because you're here now, uh, I have no clue where it is though. So I'm gonna fight one of the super bosses again. Where is he? He's dead, so I don't have to worry about it. I just I don't know where his uh, his uh. Gravestone is. There we go. Gosh. It's funny. I have all the freaking speed upgrades and I don't feel any faster. Oh, the costume shop is the DLC. I'll show it to you in a bit. I don't know where it is. I'm very confused. Because this is where I... Oh, is that it? No, that's not it. That's a different one. That's the gravestone for... Spellbinder Billy. Hello, Spellbinder Billy. Which is this guy. Those are fish. How are they attacking me? Why are they on land? I don't understand what's going on. Okay, so that's not the sewer boss, obviously. I beat him by not paying attention. Clearly not a super boss. Yeah, in my opinion, the most annoying gravestone to find was Territorial Rothbart's. That jerk. Because he wanders the field, so it's like, well, wait, then where's his gravestone? I'm very confused. It should be here. This is where the boss was. I don't know if you've seen this super boss, but... Oh, is that it? I think I see something. No, those are, that's just a tree. What'd you have to... Oh yeah, you had to Google uh, Rop Arts. Yeah, me too. I think I'm going to have to Google this one, too, because I have no clue where it is. Give me a second. I'm going to look it up.
Well, why is it there? I just looked up an image and I have no idea why it's there. Okay, I'm actually almost there. If I keep moving, I should see it. I think so. Right, let me check again. Turn on phone. Thank you. All right. Okay, I need to go a little further out. Is that it? Is this- why is it here? Is this it? This is it. Uh, spoiler alert. There is one in, uh, Torna. In Torna, there is a, uh, Symbol for gravestones on the map. I don't know why they didn't add it to Xenoblade 2. Alright, well, here he is. So, look look how stupid this is. Here's his gravestone. I'm going to activate him. Look where he appears. There. Like, it should be there. The gravestone should be here, not over there. And also, he's gigantic and terrifying. He's a Scood! I told you about the Scoods, right? And how terrible they are to fight. He's no exception. He's the Scood of Scoods. Yeah, you can- oh gosh, there we go, max damage. You can see Rex's HP, he's just consistently healing himself the entire fight. Yeah, that was his garbage annoying move. That knockback was bullshit. Yeah, it totally was. Go Rock, go! Stand up, man. <laughs> what was that little thing crawling by? Get out of the way, we're having a fight here. Awesome. 
Yeah, probably. He saw the spike going and I was like, I gotta get out of here. Alright, here we go. This will probably kill him. I believe so. Together, pride of the empire emblazoned on our hearts. There we go. Kicked his ass even harder than I did the first time. In my experience, yeah, like I need it. My whole crew is max level. Look at that. Power. I believe all that EXP gets saved to like bonus EXP though. Oh yeah, so uh, one thing. Here we go. So here's the Letherian Archipelago, here's Fonset Waters. Uh, I don't know if you've been there, but... Where is it? There's the Ansel Hatchery. It's on the left, okay. So uh, here you go, for future reference. If you want to take your Xenoblade game out right now and do it for me, please. Um, Let's rest the spell. Let's get going. You warp here. You walk down here. It's a nice, comfy walk where nothing's gonna attack you. This is the Ansel Hatchery. I think you should have passed here on the story to get to Fonset. Because this is the easiest way to get to Fonset when you need to go back to Rex's hometown. And over here is where the Heart to Heart is. It's somewhere over here. I think I already listened to it again in this uh, in this uh, file, but it's over here somewhere. And uh, that's the heart to heart you need to activate uh, the quest in Tora's house. I don't know if you listened to it already, but if you haven't, uh, it's in there. It's in here somewhere. I don't completely remember where because it's been a while. We. Let us face the day with a renewed vigor. As for the DLC, as always, it's over here. Kingdom of Uriah. Hop to the Alethra Ruins. Go to the Playhouse where Vandom died and we all had really bad time. Also where we first met Mithra. 
And they're right here. Portal. You are the land of challenge. So when you complete one of this guy's challenges, you'll get no pawn stones. And then you go talk to this guy over here. And you can give him no pawn stones for outfits. So here they are. These are the outfits. Ooh, I think I unlocked the thing now, right? Yeah, Cloud Sea King's Revenge, or Cloud King's Revenge. Friends have incurred wrath of Cloud Sea King. So much wrath, King look all red now. Time to put Ken to bed. So, uh, if this challenge looks too easy... Yeah, you can get Poppy Ram and all that. So if this, if this fight's gonna look too easy, that's because I'm on custom. And my custom is set to be the easiest difficulty in the game. I just, I wanna see what this fight is. Cause I was not allowed to do this fight until you beat Cloud C King Ken. So I beat him, so let's do the fight. In the base game, he was low 110. And now he's low 140. Yay. And he's, oh my gosh, he's huge. Even on easy, I have his HP set to the lowest it can be, and it's uh, he's got he's got a good number of it. I can't even tell what orbs he has around him. I can't see anything. Oh, I see the fire one. Oh, I fucked up. I just did fire twice in a row. I meant to switch to Mithra. Okay, that's fine. I'll do it next time. I was gonna do fire, fire, light, and I forgot. Let's 
I love this game's fighting system. Gosh, it's just so much fun. Okay, now I think we should have three spinning around there or some shit. Whoa, who are you guys? What are you doing here? Screw off! This isn't open mic night, get out! Oh, here goes the, the freaking blowback. I mean, here he has wins, right? He doesn't have win? No win? No win? No win? No win? Go for it! Electrofire Storm! This guy has absurd amount of HP. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. I need to, I need to, I need to bring out... Stand up so I can bring out Numa, quickly! Oh my gosh, they all died. Get up, please. 
is where we bring ourselves. I've been waiting for you to see that. This will be all the winning. We'll do it together. Okay, now we should be able to do this. Oh my gosh, look at that. Seven orbs. Finally, how much HP did this asshole have? I did max damage to him. Saw all those nines? Can't get any higher than that. No way. We were awesome. Oh, I got 1,337 points. Oh my gosh, I'm never gonna be able to live that down. Now, please to receive. Treasure acquired. Treasure acquired. Treasure acquired. Yeah, he had all that HP, and that was on custom, where I dropped his HP to the minimum. Can you imagine how much he has on, like, maximum? Jeez. He took a beating. I'll give him that. See, I completed all the challenges. I haven't tried Poison Paradise yet. <laughs> Maybe one time I will. And then there's a uh, Mark 8. This is the battle. This is the battle against the level 200 enemy. That, oh my gosh, that if it self-destructs, you die. And like, I haven't, I don't know how to beat it. I haven't figured it out. So yeah, if you want to see my first fight against Cloud Sea King Ken, my fight against Eric and company, and my fight against Ophion, the most important fight of all, um, uh, look for them on YouTube, appearing in maybe an hour. I don't know, it all depends on how, how, how long it takes. I don't think it should take that long, maybe like 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, I, my goal this stream was to defeat the remaining super bosses, and I defeated them. So, uh, I feel accomplished. All that remains is, uh, how, what else do we have to do in this? Oh, I guess now I can return my focus to uh, maximizing my affinity with all the characters. With all the blades. Because there's still a bunch of blades I haven't finished yet. So that'll be what I do next. I'm just gonna focus on that. That'll be fun. And maybe getting some more endgame chips just to make everyone else super powerful. Nah, no, screw that. Bringer of Chaos can die in the fire. But see? There, Tadazo has a quest. That's the quest you want. You hear me, dude? That's the one you want. Anyway, with all that out of the way, I think it's best to end the stream now. Uh, what am I going to do for the rest of today? I don't know. It's my day off from work. I can do whatever I want. 
think I'll probably play some Rise of Nations. That's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, please consider taking a rest. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, I accomplished. I did not think that I would be that fast. So uh, I'm happy about that though. And uh, hope it looked good. And I uh, hope you look forward to watching them again on on the YouTube's because uh, yeah. And you know what? Anyone who wants to come at me like, oh, but the crit heal build, you used it. I don't care. Like, it's it's in the game. You can make that build. And it's not like it helped me all the time. I still died a few times. It just ensured that I didn't die more times, which is uh, a more regular occurrence. Anyway. Thanks again. See y'all next time. Play this game. Do yourself a favor and play this game. It's really good.